Superman Lives. Written by Kevin Smith. Adapted by Tim Maxwell. Deep in space, the Skull Ship, a tentacled craft that looks like it sounds, has just completed overcoming a small spacecraft, with the predominant purpose of absorbing its energy. This energy is needed for the Skull Ship's captain, the sinister villain, Brainiac. He is humanoid in appearance, green-skinned, black-eyed, red-lipped, metallic, and bald. A series of metal relays crisscross his forehead. Three solid circles, intersected by straight lines. Brainiac survives solely on energy, and feeding off of smaller spacecrafts has become his way of life. Brainiac's small robot sidekick, Elron, returns to the Skull ship after searching the small craft for anything useful. The cosmic irony, Elron. I, who have destroyed a world, am now forced to subsist like a parasite. Once infinite power was my manifest. Now, look at my feeble attempts to maintain even this meager, anthropomorphic form. At least you have what passes for legs. What did your search of the craft yield? Elrond holds up a small containment jar. Inside scurries a multi-legged fist-sized creature. Thangarian snare beast. Infancy stage. Illegal in 16 systems due to the advanced nature of their growth patterns outside of their own atmosphere. Add it to the menagerie. Greetings. This message, transmitted in over 100 languages, comes to you from Earth. I am Lex Luthor owner and CEO of LexCorp, a vast and powerful conglomerate that dominates trade on this planet. To whatever life form may receive this, I extend an invitation to our world, non-hostile and eager to establish contact with extraterrestrial races. Earth welcomes a visit from whoever receives this greeting. I myself call upon you to make contact so that we may establish relations, open trade routes, and discuss any information you might have regarding a visitor to this planet of Kryptonian descent. Brainiac snaps to attention, shocked recognition crossing his face. My days of scavenging are over, Elrond. Lock on to this transmission and follow it to this Earth he speaks of. What for? Jor-El's most accomplished creation, Elrond. The Eradicator still exists from one superior intellect to another. Whomever or whatever you may be, I implore you to come to Earth so that we might discuss the problem we call. Superman, friend to Earth or hindrance. Tonight, we take a closer look at the Man of Steel. Does the existence of a seemingly godlike vigilante impact the world positively or negatively? Examining this with us tonight, is LexCorp CEO and Metropolis's second most well-known figure, Lex Luthor. <laughs> Mr. Luthor, you've been the most vocal proponent of the Wortham Act, the bill that seeks to outlaw costume vigilantes in the greater metropolitan area. Given that Superman is the sole individual who could fall under this criteria, the question begs asking, why so much distrust of the Man of Tomorrow? I'm no enemy of Superman, Ted. Quite the contrary. I find his flair for fashion and whimsical abilities very... David Copperfield. Such a crowd-pleasing showman who makes Metropolis his home is a boon for the tourist trade. But I do question the good that Superman represents for the human race. Beyond entertainment value. Such as? Well, aiding the planet at every turn against war, famine, natural disaster for starters. It represents a complete freeze on the evolutionary process. And what of his more immediate effects on our society? Having Superman make his home in Metropolis is a veritable call to arms for any psychotic with a dream of world domination. 
the Wortham Act would be a deterrent to those who might consider jumping into a pair of tights and challenging the Man of Steel to a battle royale right here on the streets of our fair city. An interesting position, Mr. Luthor, but one that I'm sure your opposition will refute. We welcome City Beat reporter from the Daily Planet, Lois Lane. This proposed act, which even our own Governor Bree opposes, is nothing more than Lex's one-man crusade against Superman. Outlawing the Man of Steel would be like removing the soul of the city. I mean, can anyone even remember what Metropolis was like before Superman arrived? Well, as I recall, there were less red, white, and yellow souvenir stands. Miss Lane. Have you ever been able to look past your blind allegiance to this off-worlder to think that maybe he employs criminals to improve his PR? For all we know, they're on his books. In Salem, it was a witch hunt. In Hollywood, it was the Red Scare. Leave it to your fertile imagination to come up with Cape Gate. The vehement defense you put up for him. I'd say the only thing fertile around here is someone's hopes of carrying a super brat one day. That's it. We'll be right back. Meanwhile, over in Hobbs Bay, Governor Caitlin Bree and her young son exit a bistro. They are flanked by Secret Service men. Paparazzi and telejournalists converge on them, snapping photos. Madam Governor, how is the meal? Excellent. This bistro represents the first major step in the revitalization of the historic Hobbs Bay. Do you think the redevelopment project can change the public's perception of this area as suicide slum? If the meal was any indication, I'd say absolutely. How about it, Brody? What do you think of the bistro's food? That was the best spaghetti I ever had in my whole life! <laughs> I want the Metropolitans to know that there is no danger in Hobbs Bay. Suddenly, across the street, the side of the building explodes, raining debris on the crowd. It's the villain Deadshot along with his group of masked thugs. After overpowering the Secret Service men, Deadshot grabs the governor. This city will not bow down to terrorism of any kind. Maybe not. But I'm sure you will, won't you, Mom? He drops the governor and grabs the boy by his collar. Deadshot holds his wrist revolver to the scared boy's head. A sonic boom suddenly fills the air. Deadshot looks at one of the thugs. Tell me that was your stomach. High above, a streak of red descends at a rapid rate. Oh boy. The red streak flashes past Deadshot, taking with it the boy in a blink of an eye. All immediately mobilize. Grab the broad and let's get out of here. Meanwhile, the boy is set down lightly on a roof. He opens his eyes, which then go wide. Before him stands Superman. You okay? Can we do that again? First, I gotta beat up the bad guys. My mom thinks you're cute. That's why I voted for her. Superman winks and leaps into the air, disappearing. Deadshot and his goons are in a getaway van, holding the governor hostage. Suddenly, Superman rips into the van. Engine parts fly into the air, while the hero conquers the group of thugs. Deadshot, however, still clutches Governor Bree. Hey, Boy Scout! Deadshot, holding the governor, fires a single shot to Superman's head. To his shock, the Man of Steel catches the bullet with his teeth and Rocket spits the bullet out, which hits Deadshot's wrist revolver. In a flash of red, Superman is in front of Deadshot, shaking his head. Look at your outfit. What is this, Gotham? He grabs Deadshot's wrist revolver, and then finger flicks the villain in the head, knocking him out. People emerge from the bistro, cheering as the thugs are apprehended by authorities. Meanwhile, Superman disappears in a flash, then reappears holding the governor's son. Here you go, Madam Governor. Thank you, Superman. Superman blushes slightly, pats the boy's head, and walks away. He glances down at Deadshot's wrist revolver. Using his X-ray vision, Superman looks through the weapon. He scans through the components that make it tick. 
He then zooms in on a set of microscopic serial numbers, etched into a tiny chip. Superman shakes his head and sighs, as he realizes this leads back to none other than Lex Luthor. Then the wrist revolver mysteriously blows up in a tiny explosion, seemingly destroying itself. Speaking of Lex Luthor, he is currently heading back to his office at Lex Corp, angrily speaking to himself on the elevator right up to the top floor. Six months of planning and all for nothing. With Governor Bree in line, I could have taken back control of the city from that... that alien. Suddenly, the hatch at the top of the elevator is ripped off. A blue-clad arm reaches in, pulling Lex out. It's Superman, and he's got a firm grip on Lex Luthor. Fifth floor, hair care products. One of these days they're gonna pass the Wortham Act. And one of these nights, I'll be able to blast your pajama-clad self out of the sky. Legally. Speaking of acts of violence, did you hear the one about Hobbs Bay? See, this guy wants to get his anti-Superman bill passed, so he hires a few masked goons to threaten the governor to speed the bill along. But here's the punchline. He's got such a big ego, he demands that a serial number from his company show up somewhere on the hardware he provided his hired mercenaries, thus implicating him in a federal offense. Isn't that a gut buster? Lex simply shrugs. Then an angry Superman yanks Luther to him, bringing them face to face. I'm putting you behind bars. You've got no proof. It was loaded with hardware which self-destructs, triggered by the radiation of your X-ray vision. Hmm. Then maybe I should save the courts of Metropolis the time. Make myself the judge, jury, and especially executioner. Superman hooks his foot under a bar on the elevator and starts towing the car up the shaft at an alarmingly fast rate. Luther looks up, clearly alarmed. Lex panics, as the top of the shaft gets closer. Lex jams his eyes shut. Superman stops, thus stopping the car as well. Luther's head is a half inch from a nasty spike. You're hardly worth the effort. He drops Lex, and disappears in a burst of red. Meanwhile, Inside the Skull ship, Brainiac and L. Ron are watching news footage of Superman fighting the masked thugs. Look, do they all dress like that on this planet? That symbol on his chest. It's a seal of scientific office from Krypton. It's the Kryptonian. It can't be him. Kryptonians were never known to manifest above average strength or invulnerability. Perhaps he derives his power from the Eradicator. I don't know. He's not wearing any technology. Get us to this Lex Luthor of Earth. Now! Later that night, Lois sits alone at her desk at a very empty daily planet. Something catches her gaze as she types. She spins around to see Superman floating outside the window. Lois rushes over and lets him in. Evening, Miss Lane. Late night. I'm just... filing my piece on Hop's Bay. Nice bit of work there. Superman regards a desk as they walk through the office. This is Mr. Kent's fastidiously immaculate workstation. I call it Smallville Central. He's not around tonight? Thankfully, no. If I had to have Stan Clark Kent day and night, I'd be at my therapist twice a week opposed to one. Doesn't take super senses to detect a little friction there. Not a fan of Mr. Kent, Miss Lane? Clark's Clark, you know? He's great and all, don't get me wrong. But he's kind of a... Dudley Do-Right. It's hard for me to relate to a man like that. And why's that? Well, Superman, I'm not into all that Kansas Boy Scout babble. I'm the kind of woman who likes a man in tights. Miss Lane, I have something to tell you. I'm really Clark Kent. Lois goes wide-eyed and faints. Superman rushes forward and catches her. Then she opens her eyes and shakes her head. Really, Clark? Must we go through this every night? They kiss, their love for one another very evident. Nice job with the bad guys, babe. I was proud of you. Smallville Central? Really? So, how about dinner? 
not fast food again. Let's just eat at my place. Why, Miss Lane, you underestimate me. I was thinking a more monumental dinner. Meanwhile, Lex sits in his office, brooding. He's beginning to think that taking down Superman is just a futile and hopeless idea. Then, all of a sudden, the door opens. How many times do I have to say intercom? Lex spins around in his chair and is visibly shocked at what he sees. Lex Luthor of Earth, I am Brainiac. I come to discuss the Kryptonian you mentioned in your homing message. Lex and Brainiac look at each other cautiously until Lex motions toward his desk. Brainiac follows, but stops short at Lex's impressive computer setup, with a look of astonishment crossing his face. Brainiac sharply raises his hand between he and Lex. Lex startles a bit as Brainiac's hand then reconfigures into something that he inserts into the computer. Brainiac cocks his head as if in deep thought. Lex Tech Prime. My computer division builds these things. It's the most cutting edge, the most sophisticated, the most... Primitive. Ancient. Yes, well, you obviously know whereof you speak. This Kryptonian you mentioned, I know of him as well. He's my mortal enemy, the object of my ire. The... Wait. You're not... a friend of his, by any chance. Are you? Where I come from, we destroy that which impedes our progress. Why have you not done the same? Superman would have been dead if it weren't for the fact that he's from Krypton. Wherever that is. Which means he can't be killed. I watched Krypton die screaming, Lex Luthor. Invulnerable is something its inhabitants weren't. He is aided by technology of some sort. A machine? As far as we can tell, Pinocchio has no strings. Then it's his chemistry. It must be affected by this planet. Radioactive shards of our destroyed homeworld would be toxic to his system. Kryptonite. I've spent the last two years and millions of LexCorp dollars trying to synthesize the stuff. You know what it yielded? The Chia Pet. Lex reaches into a drawer and pulls out a pottery shell, covered in mossy grass. Lex places it on his desk, beside a model of a space station with large mirror panels. Brainiac analyzes the model curiously. One of LexCorp's long-range goals. A solar conductor. One of these days this puppy's gonna make me a multi-billionaire, going to draw energy directly from the sun's surface and sell it to the masses. Brainiac presses something on the model and huge gun turrets pop out, with accompanying cannons. That's the long, long-range goal. A massive, solar-powered cannon. We're thinking concentrated sunbeams might fry a hole through the Man of Steel. It's a stretch, but a guy's gotta have a dream. Blasting him with a solar beam will only enhance his power. This world is fueled by the light of a yellow sun. Krypton was fueled by a sun, a red sun. The actual construct of this is it operational? Maybe in 20 years. But for what it's worth, it's up there already. Surrender it to me. I'll augment it with my own technology. Provide me with this, and you will not only have your solar conductor 20 years ahead of schedule, but this Superman will be dead. All the capital, material, and technologies of my company are at your service. If you can kill Superman. You accomplish that, and to this planet's inhabitants, I'll make you a god. A short time later, Brainiac and Elrond are working on the solar conductor, labeled LexTech 37. Together, they cause the technology to advance far beyond its inherent capability. Using a mix of lasers and mirrors, it creates a net that incrementally and slowly begins stretching, blocking sunlight from reaching Earth. They call it the Shadowcaster. Monumental? You're such a goof. You could have just said, Hey Lois, wanna have dinner atop Mount Rushmore? Admit it, you love the view. And as for my pun, thank Pa for that. He was the punster of the family. 
Ma's the one who taught me to cook, though. Ma also teach you how to reheat chicken with your eyes? Some things a boy has to learn on his own. Did it ever bother you, being the adopted child? Never knowing your real parents? If I ever did, it was only because I couldn't help but feel my destiny might have been stolen from me. How so? I'd start wondering what I was supposed to do in life. What would I be like if Krypton hadn't, you know, blown up? Who were my parents? Would I have ever left the planet? Would I have ever come to Earth? Would I have ever met you? No, but you'd probably still read me. You'd say to yourself, if only I could be half the writer this lowest lane of planet Earth is. <laughs> I know it sounds silly. Where do I get off complaining? Me, the guy who's faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive. What's the last one? Something about tall buildings. Right, but all that aside, I'm just a person, you know? I have what-ifs like everyone else. What if I'd grown up under a red sun and never had these powers? Who would save me again and again and again? Somehow I doubt you'd have any trouble getting along without me. Excuse me, that was strange. Maybe it's indigestion. You look woozy. Are you okay? Maybe I didn't cook the chicken long enough. I'm fine. You know what I was just thinking about? The rocket. The one you told me brought you to Earth? Whatever happened to it? It's at the fortress. Did you ever study it? Try to learn something more about where you came from? About your parents, even? I know all I'm ever going to know. There was a planet. It blew up. End of story. I'd rather dwell on the present and the future, which is something I'd like to talk to you about. No, no, let's talk about flying home and going to bed. We both have work tomorrow. Why do you always get like this when I try to talk about where our relationship is going? All I'm saying is that I love you, and I'd like to talk about something more permanent. I love you too, but your responsibilities are huge. I can't possibly expect you to divide your time between a wife and the world. What about children, if that's even possible? I could slow down. Face myself. And feel the weight of a death you couldn't prevent just because you were too busy bringing the kids to the video store. There's nothing I'd want more than to share a life with you. But I won't settle for a half-life. Clark takes it in somberly. Then he lifts his head, as if listening to something far away. A plane's in trouble over Paraguay. Go ahead. Just don't forget to come back for me. Clark becomes a blur that turns into Superman. Then he leaps off the cliff. Suddenly, Superman falters in midair and falls against the edge of the cliff. <gasps> Lois runs to his aid, helping him pull himself over the cliff. Clark, are you okay? What happened? Was it Crypt's night? <sighs> it wasn't a toxic reaction. It was something else. <clears throat> I'll be okay. That plane won't make it if I don't leave now. Are you out of your mind? You almost fell off a cliff, Clark! Superman gently extracts his cape from her grip, touching her face. He then lifts off the ground, hanging there, apparently back to normal. He then disappears in a flash of red, leaving behind a worried Lois. Inside the Skull ship, Brainiac punches some buttons, and information on the Eradicator fills the screen. How do you know the Eradicator will even show up? It's been years, my leash. The technology could be ancient. jor was no fool. He would not have sent his only child to an alien world without the protection the Eradicator would provide. The technology is out there, Elron, and absorbing it will provide me with enough power to both maintain my body permanently and make me a god. Right. Let's kill the cape. Brainiac then sends a mysterious capsule to Earth, which contains an even more mysterious occupant. One more time, Olson. In English, please. How did we get these shots again? Like I said, Chief, I'm wired. 
Jump into the cyber pool with the rest of us, Mr. White. And we're allowed to run these pictures? Free and clear, with a photo credit. Give the kid a break, Perry. He's all about the paper. Lois, why do I feel the need to remind you that this is my office? Lois works here under the assumption it's hers as well. Eat it, Smallville. All right, Olsen. You can keep your computer thing up. Now vamoose. Down to brass tacks. What have either of you got? A top lech tech scientist, Dr. Schuster, went missing last night. Got a call from a technician who said that Schuster and Lex got into a heated argument over the altered trajectory of that Lex Tech experimental space station. The one Lex has yet to disclose the purpose of to NASA? What else? The boys in Weber fed me this one. Seems that Dawn was 11 minutes behind schedule this morning. Cause? Unsubstantiated rumors of something spotted by the fellows up at the observatory. Sounds like a story up Smallville's alley. I believe Mr. White gives out the assignments here, Laney. Don't call me that. Then don't call me Smallville. Perry White. What? I'll be right there. Both of you stay here and hash out who gets the space thing. I'll be right back. Okay, let's talk about last night. I'm having a hard time understanding what I said that was so wrong. You didn't say anything wrong, Clark. You said everything a woman spends her whole life waiting for a man to say to her. Then why your reaction? Because you're not a man, Clark. You're a god. Uh, <sighs> Clark attempts to speak, but pauses. He listens to seemingly nothing. Lois looks at him, puzzled. What is it? In the Daily Planet, journalists look up from their keyboards as the room begins to shake. Lois looks slightly panicked as Clark unbuttons his collar. Earthquake? Can't be. I checked the crustal plates just last month. Meanwhile, over in Metropolis Park, a large rumble echoes from the sewer underneath. Then suddenly, the ground explodes, throwing people into the air and leaving a six-foot crater. Though he can't conclusively determine what's happening, Superman can at least ascertain this much from the Daily Planet. Looks like some type of explosion in the sewer beneath Metropolis Park. I'm going in, Lois, but I want you to do me a favor. Whatever you do, stay away from Metropolis Park. I've got a bad feeling about this. I've got a good feeling that whatever it is, is news. And me being a journalist... Lois, no. Last night, about what happened at the cliff. You slipped, Clark. That's all. But it happened when I grabbed the plane, too. Something didn't feel right. Just please, stay put until I know everything's all right. Okay. When the Man of Steel arrives at the crater, he looks into the darkness. Meanwhile, Brainiac's Shadowcaster seals off another section of the sun and Superman begins to realize something is going on with the sunlight and he looks up. But then suddenly, two gray meaty paws erupt from the earth pulling Superman underground. <laughs> Superman emerges from the muck. He wipes his eyes clean and looks up to see an unearthly monster, ferocious and gray in appearance, with leathery skin pockmarked with rock-like protrusions. Doomsday has arrived. The beast leaps at the Man of Steel and the pair begin their fight. It's a colossal battle between the two titans. They exchange a series of mighty blows and kicks. And despite Doomsday's massive physique and his demonstrated level of strength, Superman rallies against him. Meanwhile, Brainiac and L. Ron watch the combatants fighting on the main screen inside the Skull ship. He's incredible! He just keeps going! I call it... Doomsday. Not that thing! Superman! Look at him battle! I wouldn't lay wages on the Kryptonian just yet. Meanwhile, the Shadowcaster goes full throttle, completely cutting off what little sunlight was seeping out. The Earth and the city of Metropolis are plunged into darkness. Inside the Daily Planet, Lois and Jimmy watch from the windows as everyone panics. Hey, it's only noon. What's going on with the sun? I can only hope Kent's out there covering this. The same place you should be, Lois. 
although from a safe distance. But Chief, I promise. Olsen, you go with her. I want some shots of whatever that thing is Superman's fighting. I'm on it, Chief. Come on, Miss Lane. And hurry. If I know the Man of Steel, this rumble's going to be over before it started. Back at Metropolis Park, the two opponents are now back in the sewer. Not only exchanging fists, but also chunks of concrete. As all sunlight is now cut off, Superman can feel his strength slowly being depleted and the monstrous beast begins to gain the advantage. Is this thing on? <laughs> Hello, blue boy. It's your better. Luthor speaking to you from a frequency that only super hearing can detect. Things don't look too good for you, alien. It seems I've finally found your Achilles heel, the Earth's yellow sun. Without it, you're not that impressive. Look at you, alone, beaten, nearly broken. Where are all the good people you've put your neck on the line so many times for? You'd think they'd return the favor. Superman continues to battle Doomsday, despite Luther's taunting words. The two assailants blast through walls of concrete, spraying debris all over. The scene is brutal, a fight with seemingly no end. As Doomsday advances, Superman rallies back, giving all he's got, but he is running out of time and out of strength. You'd think the solar energy that you store would last longer, wouldn't you? I mean, you fly at night, and there's no sun then. Why are you weakening now? <laughs> Apparently, soaring through the sky, catching muggers, and rustling the occasional cat burglar doesn't take the effort it's taking you to hold your own against the mindless wonder there. Any stored solar energy you may have is being exhausted. Plainly put, you're running out of gas, and the pumps are closed. Meanwhile, something back at the Fortress of Solitude, Superman's home away from home, begins to activate. The craft that brought Superman to Earth hangs in the fortress, among various trophies and keepsakes. The body of the craft dislodges from the ceiling, falling to the snow. It begins transforming, growing a body, the body of the Eradicator. It's clearly reacting to what is happening to Superman back in Metropolis. Back in Metropolis, Superman's costume is torn, dripping with blood. Superman and Doomsday go at it, both weakening, but it's clear Superman's worse off. The hero gives it his all against the mindless Doomsday, the voice of Lex still filling his head. I really just called to tell you that your reign is over. You're being replaced. And this city, this world, is about to fall on its knees before Lex Corp and its CEO. Lois arrives at Metropolis Park and pushes through the crowd, followed by Jimmy. Clark, go! Fly away! Get out of here before that thing kills you! His power is diminished, and the Man of Steel is on the ropes. His lethal opponent, too, appears to be reaching for the grave, but neither relents. You had no business here from the start, Kryptonian. But here... You'll die. I just wanted you to know who it was that beat you, boy. As Superman engages with Doomsday, he glances at Lois and manages a final weak smile, as if to say goodbye. Through her tears, she smiles as well until she realizes what it means. And the pair throw their last punches, connecting with one another's heads. The shock of their mortal blows explode like a sonic boom throughout Metropolis. And in a moment that seems like an eternity, the two mighty combatants fall to the ground. The city is paralyzed. Then the crowd starts to move. News crews and military personnel converge, crowding around the fallen Superman. Lois fights her way through the masses, dropping to her knees beside the fallen man of steel. She lifts his head from the rubble, cradling it. He weakly opens his eyes. Is it? Shh. You did it, Clark. You did it. Lois. Superman is dead. 
The crowd watches in despair. Lex, who is in his office, forms a smile. Brainiac and L. Ron, in the skull ship both smile, with an expression of success. Throw out a wave pulse net. If my calculations are correct, the technology will be coming online soon. A signal beeps. Brainiac punches a button anxiously, only to be greeted by Lex's face on the view screen. What are you waiting for? Phase 2. If this is gonna work, we have to move to Phase 2 now. Right. Brainiac switches the screen off, ending the communication with Lex Luthor. Elrond, animate the carcass. Let's finish this mess so we can find the technology. Back in Metropolis, Doomsday's eyes snap open. The creature then sits upright. The tearful Lois looks up from her fallen lover to see the creature moving. From the skull ship's bow, a red beam shoots out, cutting through space. The beam strikes the animated dead body of Doomsday, incinerating it. People leap out of the way as the beast explodes. Metropolitans look skyward for the source of the blast, but find nothing. In the days following Superman's death, the city is abnormally dark, both in mourning and in lack of sun. On the streets below, artificial light is cast from high-powered LexCorp electric lights. On the streets of Metropolis are massive crowds of people. All are wearing black armbands embossed with Superman's S symbol. They scramble to get a look at a horse-drawn carriage, in the midst of which is a casket. Its open top reveals Superman, who lies there lifeless and peaceful, while his cape hangs over the lid. Cat Grant here, bringing you the WGBS's continuing coverage of what the president has called the world's darkest hour. Offering her perspective on this sadly historic day is Daily Planet reporter Lois Lane, whose name is synonymous with Superman. While we here in Metropolis say goodbye to a friend, around the globe, Crisis management teams are working tirelessly to counter the effects of the eclipse. Financial analysis have predicted that LexCorp will make billions from around the globe as a sole supplier of available energy. The burial monument, commissioned by Lex Luthor himself, strikes this reporter as being built in a remarkable, expedient fashion. When questioned on this, Luthor responded evasively, We had our differences, but a man such as this deserves an equal memorial. Lois, perhaps the greatest memorial to his efforts is that so far, zero casualties have been reported from the citywide battle. Although my... my... colleague, Clark Kent, is... still missing, presumably killed during the fallout from the battle. Rescue teams have been shifting through the rubble, but so far there's no sign of... of him. More on that story tonight, but right now, the procession has reached the tomb. The carriage stops, and a priest says a blessing over the fallen hero's body, closing the casket lid. But before it closes, two small blinking lights attached to his suit emanate. Pallbearers carry the casket toward the monument. It's a huge, bronze replica of Superman in his up-up and away posture. Jimmy snaps away stopping momentarily to wipe a tear from his eye, as the pallbearers insert the casket into the base, sealing the metal doors. Meanwhile, inside the Skull ship, Brainiac and L. Ron look at their screen and see the outline of Superman's body and the blinking red lights. Digital tumblers lock into place, and a message resonates. L. Ron turns to Brainiac, who is suiting up in some uncharacteristic costuming, complete with a cape. The security measures on both the suit and the tomb have been activated, if anything attempts to remove his body. And that's a big if. There are no ifs, Elrond. The Eradicator is here, I know it. And who, might I ask, is opening for my liege in Vegas this weekend? Lex Luthor's idea of what a Kryptonian should look like alone marks him for execution. Something we should act on now. I have further use for Lex Luthor. Until such time as we have the Eradicator, 
I will feed off Lex Corp's energy supplies to maintain my form. Once we have the technology of Jorel, you may kill Lex Luthor. Now prepare my skiff. Later that night in Metropolis Park, Governor Bree rides a cherry picker to the outstretched arm of the statue, where she hangs Superman's cape. For the crowd that can't get near the tomb, the burial is broadcast on the WGBS building's giant screen TV. Then, the image of the funeral is interrupted by a familiar symbol, the bat signal. It fades into a shadowy image of the dark night, deep within the bat cave. Good evening, Metropolis. It is with a heavy heart that I offer you my and Gotham's deepest condolences. I apologize for my absence, but with the loss of the sun, I am all that opposes the criminal element in my city, who've seized upon the cover of darkness to further their evil purposes. The guardian of your city, of the world, held Metropolis and its inhabitants very near to his heart. It's been said that he fought a never-ending battle for truth, justice, and the American way. Honor this fallen soldier well by keeping his memory alive in the face of this adversity. From this day forward, we forever shoulder the burden of a world without a Superman. On the giant screen, the Dark Knight withdraws further back into the shadows, until he is completely unseen. The bat signal comes up again, and then scrambles into the image of the funeral below. But suddenly, over the top of the giant screen, a hover skiff rises, sending the crowd below into a panic. Jimmy Olsen, who is standing next to Lois, snaps pictures of the descending craft as it lands on the viewing stage. Aboard the craft is Brainiac who is now decked out in an alien garb, replete with a face-obscuring helmet, and Lex, with an arm draped over Brainiac's shoulder. Lex jumps to the podium microphone. People of Metropolis, this is a great day in our planet's history. Today, you will learn of a secret too long kept by myself and Superman. Superman's job was not to protect our city, but instead to pave the way for an amazing new era in this planet's history. Over the last two years, Superman and I had been working closely to prepare this world for its introduction to more extraterrestrials like himself. And like the being I now present to you, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the true power behind our fallen man of steel, Brainiac. Urged by Lex, Brainiac approaches the podium as a hush falls over the crowd. Today marks a terrible day for our planet Krypton. Superman, as you called him, was a herald of the highest order, having gone before me to many planets, preparing them for first contact. I stand before you now in the spirit of hope and peace. Keep it up, they're buying it. His true mission was kept secret from you, to protect you until you were ready to accept aliens into your world. Sorrowfully, my herald gave his life fighting a foul menace, weakening the beast so that I was able to vaporize it using the power of my ship above. The creature was from a race of warmongers that have designated this planet for annihilation but in concert with Superman and Lex Luthor, I have been able to blanket your planet in darkness to protect you from the approaching hordes. What is he talking about? Is he saying that you two... What? Blocked out the sun? Miss Lane, let the deity speak. Using materials provided by Lex Luthor and my own advanced technology, I fashioned a device to enshroud the planet in a darkness that will provide camouflage. From what? From them. Suddenly, the dark skies above shimmer, and an armada of ships are seen moving slowly through space, patrolling. With the multitude of spacecraft visible, it appears that Earth is under attack. The crowd begins to panic. Do not fear. 
We are not visible to the Armada. The forced eclipse that darkens the skies is what keeps us hidden. The menace above cannot detect your world and will slowly pass through your galaxy within days. Once they have moved on, I will end the eclipse and bring back the sun. Until that time, LexCorp Energy will fuel the planet, and LexCorp Industrial Services will keep the world operating smoothly, as if the sun had never left. Like Superman, I will endeavor to protect the Earth and its inhabitants. It's the least I can do in return for your warm, warm welcome and in memory of Superman. Within Superman's tomb, inside the casket, the S symbol on Superman's chest begins glowing red. Superman's body begins shimmering and teleports out of sight, leaving behind his suit, on which the security measures still blink. Kalel, this is Jarel, your father. You are comatose, and this is a dream, but please watch and listen. It has been many years since you've looked upon the face of your birth father through infant eyes. I only wish this message came to you under better circumstances. Your mother and I spent years constructing an autonomous freeform computer in order to study more closely the volatile core of our home world. We named the living computer the Eradicator after a Kryptonian mythological figure. It confirmed our worst fears. The planet was unstable, but even more horrifying was the cause of the duress. The Brainiac system had come from off-world, brought online to police the planet. We learned it was up to far more than that. I discovered the renegade science officer, jor -El, engaged in illegal planetary experimentation. How does the accused plea? I'll plea anything you wish. If the Council will hear my plea that the planet be evacuated now, in moments Krypton will perish. Brainiac, is there any validity to jor -El's claim? None. He's lying. The planet is in no danger. But jor -El himself represents a threat. He has ignored the tempered technology code and constructed a sentient computer system with a perpetual battery. The Eradicator. The Eradicator is not the threat. Brainiac is. The data we collected points to him as the cause of the core's instability. He's siphoning off the planet's energy. Brainiac had intended to fashion a body for himself using the energy from the planet's core. But by absorbing the Eradicator, not only could he have the body he so desired, he also possesses a perpetual battery by which to power him indefinitely. Ironically, his drain on the planet's core finally took its toll. Facing the destruction he created, Brainiac was forced to depart Krypton on a craft he'd constructed in secrecy, without the body he so desired. When Krypton was in its final moments, I held you for the last time. I sent you to Earth to keep you away from Brainiac, and in the event of a significant drop in your vital signs, the Eradicator will come to your aid. Suddenly, Superman wakes up. He immediately looks around, lost, and confused. He sits in a Kryptonian resuscitation chamber, his body surrounded by a dense goo. He slowly rises, wiping the jelly from his body and face. The old blue and red suit is no more. It is now replaced by a black resuscitation suit. He realizes he is in the Fortress of Solitude. The Eradicator rises behind the resurrected hero, and Superman turns quickly. Greetings, son of jor -El. It has been some time since last we met. Your hardware has improved, and now you wear clothes. I... I saw my father, jor -El. It was like my life flashed before my eyes. It was from a part of my life I don't remember. Krypton. I've never seen it. I saw my birth parents, but not Ma and Pa, and Lois, 
Why didn't I see her? You think your final reflection would include the most important person in your life? Perhaps because your reflection was far from final. I'm alive? I'm alive! Then that was just a dream? A message downloaded it into your cerebral cortex while you were in the resuscitation bath. You were on Krypton too? With my father? How did you get here? I was the craft that brought you to this planet years ago. My programming allows me to shapeshift into any form of equal mass to my own humanoid structure. The rocket was only large enough to carry a child, a factor that prevented me from transporting your parents, as well as yourself. You've been in the fortress all this time and I didn't know it? I was programmed to lie dormant, until such a time as your vital signs waned. That's never been a factor until now. I'm remembering now. The sun was blocked. My father warned me about a threat from Krypton in the message. Brainiac! Is that the creature I was fighting? No. Brainiac is far more dangerous than that beast. Then I've got to bring him down. Where's my suit? I've got to get back to Metropolis. Your powers are gone. Oh, no. You're right. They are. I can't fly. I can't do anything. I'm... normal. Will my powers return? Once we get away from the shadowed Earth and closer to the sun, you should be back online. I've constructed a ship, and it will be taking us off-world in less than an hour. Whoa, whoa, leave? We must find another world where the sun affects you as it did here. But what about Brainiac? I can't leave all these people behind! When Earth was chosen as your home, it was so the powers you would manifest would place you above its inhabitants, not so you could be their champion. No, no! We're staying here and fighting Brainiac. I don't care if I really die this time. Fortunately, that will never be a factor. The program your father imparted to me before we left the dying Krypton was to ensure your longevity. I can't die? As long as I function, no. Then all the more reason to go after this Brainiac character. I'm not letting him do to Earth what he did to Krypton! Brainiac has come to this planet to hunt me. He's after my perpetual battle and he will destroy this world if he must to acquire it. That endangers your life, which is against my programming. We must find you a new home. Earth is my home! You expect me to just leave it behind? Leave Lois? Just to save myself? Yes, this race is as good as extinct, kal -El. You cannot save them now. I have to at least try. That's in my programming. I can feel your passion, kal -El. I understand. The first order of business would be to remove whatever's blocking the sun. But apparently, I'm unable to fly. Which leaves the question of how to reach that thing. Back in Metropolis, things have drastically changed. The Skull ship now rests atop the twin metro towers, and it has grown, encasing the buildings in the steel of its hull, squid-like in nature. The large screen that rests atop the WGBS building now airs updates and reports of the Armada's distance from Earth. Meanwhile, Lex Luthor speaks to the press on the front steps of LexCorp, as his designated representative, Brainiac has asked me to give you this latest update. According to his calculations, the Armada should completely pass through our solar system in a matter of days. At which time, the sun will return. This city, this world, knows how much Brainiac has done for us. There are some people who will take issue with anything for the sake of being contradictory. Don't let their bitter voices echo louder than the joyous praise of the majority. Ironically enough, you were once the bitter minority, complaining about Superman's interference with the planet. Yet now you lay like a lapdog at the feet of Brainiac. Why the switch? Well, Miss Lane, I did not understand Superman's purpose. Brainiac explained it to me. I only wish I had known his import before he died. Call me a skeptic, 
but somehow I don't buy your sincerity, Lex. Well, Miss Lane, it's like the shirt says. Lex rips open his button-down shirt, Superman style, revealing a t-shirt beneath. On it is the image of a stone-faced brainiac, around whose head the letters spell out. I'm a maniac for Brainiac. Meanwhile, Brainiac addresses the World Congress in a conference room full of delegates. Ladies and gentlemen of the World Congress, it is my conclusion that the marauders who seek to ravage your planet have sent an even deadlier threat than the doomsday creature. Elrond's chest opens, revealing a projector of sorts. An image of the Eradicator is thrown onto the screen. This being is an anthropomorphic weapon, a hundred times more powerful than your atomic bomb. Its detonation, while effectively wiping out half of Earth's population, will also signal the armada of the planet's hidden location. What can we do to prevent this? Utilize your military, have them locate this weapon, but do not engage it. When you have found it, contact me. I will defuse it. That is all. Later on, Brainiac and Elrond enter the Skull Ship. You sure gave those guys a scare. Which will ensure that they work twice as hard as even us to locate the Eradicator technology. Won't Lex Luthor ask questions when he hears about this? He'll know you're lying. We have nothing to fear on this dismal planet, Elrond. Least of all the slow-witted Lex Luthor. Meanwhile, the ship containing Superman and the Eradicator soars through space, towards the far-off Shadowcaster. Inside the ship, Superman is now outfitted with an armored-looking suit, with no symbol on his chest. Superman examines the suit. What is it going to do exactly? It's a resuscitative suit. Your trial has left you injured and weakened. These units will expedite your recovery. It will support your strained back muscles, repair the fracture in your shoulder, support your ankles, and protect your vertebrae. All this and I'm still powerless? But protected. Strap yourself in now, kal -El. We've almost reached our destination. Meanwhile, Lois and Jimmy arrive at LexCorp for a scheduled interview with Lex Luthor. Well, 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 Metropolis's own voice of dissent. If I'm the mouthpiece, wouldn't that make you the other cavity? Good old Lois. Always a quipper, aren't you? You want something to print in that rag you work for, print this. This anti-brainiac rhetoric you've been spouting both today and in the pages of the planet is dangerous. I only pray that your columns continue to be read as merely socio-political criticism, and not as an act of sedition. Sedition? Since when is an opinion considered sedition? What do you think those huge ships are? Parade floats? If you unsettle Brainiac with your mistrust, you put this planet in peril. There's not a government on Earth that wouldn't call that sedition. So we wait out the cold and dark bestowed upon us by an alien who's supposedly protecting us from other aliens. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. Is that any different from what Superman did? You were his greatest advocate, Miss Lane. And when, in death, his true agenda is revealed, you turn against your Man of Steel's own master. The day I believe Superman was in league with Brainiac is the day I quit the city desk and take over the planet's horoscope page. Then start watching the stars, young lady. You've already got most of the world doing that. This would probably be a great time to take that photo, Mr. Luther. Sure, let me fake a smile. But I'm sure if Miss Lane had it her way, this photo would appear on the obituary page, under the heading Luther Finally Out Cold. Then Lex drops to the ground, unconscious. Lois discreetly palmed a small needle into his neck. How long have we got? Dr. Hamilton said about five minutes. Do your thing, kid. Jimmy hits the computer, typing as fast as he can. Within moments, Jimmy gains access to Lex's files. Lois looks over the desk as he scrolls through them, keeping an eye on Luther's condition. I think I've got something. Well, well, well. Seems like the old weasel's not much of a maniac for Brainiac after all. Looks like Lex has some backstabbing plans for Brainiac. That could be helpful down the road. Now, download all of these files to your disk before he wakes up. Moments later, 
Lex wakes. Mm. Mm. What happened? You passed out, Lex. Must be all the stress. Must be. Wait, who's on my computer? No idea. Oh, I see what's going on here. Security, seal the exits now! Lois grabs Jimmy and sprints to the balcony. They rush outside and slam the doors behind them. Lois looks in every direction and spots Brainiac's skiff parked to the side. She looks at Jimmy. Gotta be close to a moped, right? Don't let them get away. Shoot to kill. Lois and Jimmy leap aboard the hover jet, gun the engine, and shoot into the air. As the security team unloads a lethal payload into the air. With Jimmy holding on for dear life, Lois maneuvers the hover jet like a pro, dodging shots left and right. She soars higher into the air, steering the vehicle toward the top of the building. Uh, shouldn't we be getting as far away from here as possible? This is kind of like a date, isn't it, Jimmy? Well, on a date you get dinner. And a movie. Lois flies over the roof of LexCorp revealing the huge holograph device that throws the image of the Armada against the sky. Alright, there it is, Jimmy. The holographic device displaying the fake Armada. Take some shots. Now we've got all the proof we need. The Skull ship rests on the snowy plains where Superman's fortress resides. Brainiac and L. Ron emerge, led by General Darris and two soldiers. The President's known about Superman's fortress for years, but we've always respected the Man of Steel's privacy. It wasn't until your address that I suggested we investigate the premises for a breach. Very wise of you, General Darris. As they approach the entranceway, the two polar bears rise from their statue-like positions and attack the escort soldiers, tearing them apart. The bears turn on Brainiac, who ferociously wrestles the first bear to the ground, savagely killing it. Seeing this, the second bear turns and flees. Inside the fortress, Brainiac stops where the resuscitation bath was. A remnant of green goo from the bath lies on the snow. His hand morphs into a mini vacuum of sorts and sucks it up. It's him. The Eradicator was here. Prepare your men for his return, but do not shoot to kill. Leave his capture to me. Then, Brainiac falters. He looks at his arm, which begins withering. Elron then quickly ushers Darius away. All right, show's over. Nothing to see here. Go outside with your drones and march around or something. We have to get you back to the ship, my liege. No. I will gain my... energy by absorbing... the Eradicator. Upon his return. If we don't return to Metropolis and hook you back into the core to maintain your form, you'll be offline in minutes. We'll come back for the Eradicator. He's not going anywhere. Brainiac then falters completely and shuts down. Elron reacts, rushing to his aid. Superman and the Eradicator reach the Shadowcaster. It's imposing beyond belief. The Eradicator hooks into the satellite and begins processing. Eradicator, can you enhance the view screen to X-ray? The screen X-rays until the words LexTech 37 are visible. Lex, what a shock. Suddenly, an electrical charge runs through the Eradicator's hookup. It detaches itself from the Shadowcaster and goes dark. Then Superman and the Eradicator's craft begin plummeting toward Earth. Uh, Eradicator? Brainiac's technology has taken a bit out of me, Kello. We're free-falling here. The technology is not only working from a program like processors find too foreign to crack, it has also had a negative impact on my neural net. My systems are shutting down. What? It's akin to the toxic effect kryptonite has on your systems. A kryptonite leaves me powerless! Bingo. The craft continues to plummet towards Earth, screaming into the lower atmosphere, getting closer and closer to the land. Come on, man! Up, up and away! 
I'm attempting a cross relay with my transmit. Should take approximately 30 minutes. We don't have 30 minutes. We're going down now. I did not come this far in life and cheat death just to die in what's essentially a plane crash. Ah, uh, never mind. Here we are. The Eradicator comes back online as the craft's interior lights begin to illuminate again. Right in the nick of time, it pulls its nose up, narrowly missing a violent impact with the ground and coming to a rocky landing in the midst of a desolate city. Meanwhile, inside the skull ship, Elrond uses a mysterious device to revive Brainiac. Why did you bring me back here? If we'd waited, the Eradicator would have been mine. My leech, you are nearly powerless. If you've interfered with my manifest, you little talking cog, I will absorb the insignificant energy that is wasted on you. Bring us back to the Antarctic. Now, I will have that technology. What is it? Something is rapidly descending towards Earth that doesn't match any known terrestrial crafts, and it's giving off radiation readings native to you know where? The technology of Jorel. Oh no. It says signal lost. Where did it go? It's cloaking itself. It's on its way here to Metropolis. It means to enter the city undetected to revive the Kryptonian's body. Then surely the League of Nations search teams will pick it up on radar. I'm leaving nothing to chance. It may be cloaked now, but cloaks are simple encryption programs. Break its code. Do not fail me, little robot. Superman and the Eradicator climb out of the craft. <laughs> Is this your idea of preserving my life? It would appear that Brainiac has rendered the device tamper-proof. The anti-technology is beyond my comprehension. The hardware... Provided by Luther. That's why he moved his space station. Lois was right. That story was up my alley. You dreamt of this, Lois, when you were in the resuscitation chamber. You would have her as Jorel has Lara? I would, but she has trouble having me. And this disturbs you? It has its drawbacks, yes. I've ascertained that the inhabitants of this planet hold you in high esteem. I don't see why the affection, or lack thereof, of what matters in respect to the multitude who show you allegiance. That's something I've been dwelling on since I came back, and I think I've come to a truth that I've never wanted to face before. Yes, I do it all for the multitude. But when I save lives or fight for the weak, I'm saving one life, fighting for one person, again and again and again. It's her, don't you see? She represents all of them, their hopes, their fragility, their passion. And if I ever feel like no matter how much I do, it's not enough, I think of Lois. And then, I'm off. Faster than a speeding bullet to be Earth's champion, but always hers first. This does not compute. That's because it's not about knowledge, it's about heart. Suddenly, a loud explosion interrupts the conversation. In the distance they can see an apartment building is on fire. Superman reacts racing toward the sound. The Eradicator follows. Tenants pour out of the building. Superman takes his classic stance and attempts to blow Super Breath, forgetting his lack of powers. He appears crestfallen for a moment, then looks to the Eradicator. Have you lost sight of the fact that you are now as vulnerable to those you seek to aid? I can't just stand here like you and watch. Then, the windows blow out of the bottom floors of the apartment building. People scream from the second and third floor windows. Superman looks to the Eradicator, desperate. They lock eyes. The Eradicator steps back and morphs into a dazzling display of body armor. Climb in. This will enable you to duplicate any of your former powers. You didn't think to suggest this earlier? and patronize your messiah complex further? The suit seals itself around Superman, concealing his identity, and lifts into the air. In the super suit, the now literal man of steel is able to rescue everyone from the building and bring them to safety. Before he leaves the scene, the now disguised Superman is approached by the fire chief. 
What do they call you, man? Huh? You're one of those superheroes, right? What do they call you so I don't look like an idiot when I tell the press some guy in a robot suit saved a lot of people? Just tell them I'm back. Superman leaps into the sky, rocketing out of sight. Who's back? Where are we going, Kal-El? Metropolis. Is there ever a moment's peace with you? In this form, you're monopolizing energy that was chiefly powering my cloaking field. Shut it down. What? Brainiac will detect us. Let him. I want him to know that I'm coming. Inside the skull ship, L. Ron bangs at the keys of the main computer. Then a flashing image and shrill beep come up on the view screen. Uh, my liege, I think I cracked the code. You have the technology's position? It's three hours west and heading toward us at an alarming rate. The scene is surreal back at the Daily Planet, LexCorp security. Now decked out more like soldiers, topple file cabinets and rifle through desks. Great Caesar's ghost, you're going to have the biggest lawsuit on your hands when I get through with you. Brainiac's emissary or not, you've got no right. I've got every right. This is national security. Lois Lane and James Olsen are under suspicion of engaging in espionage and propaganda that threatens not just this country, but the world. This is a newspaper for crying out loud. We don't trade in propaganda. We print the news. Then print this, old man. By order of the authority given Brainiac by the World Congress while this planet is under his protection, Lane and Olsen are hereby charged with sedition and insurrection. And unless you want to be charged with aiding and abetting known felons, I suggest you divulge their whereabouts. I'm sending the picture of the holographic projector to every news service and paper on the net. They should have it in seconds. Hey, look at this, Miss Lane. Some sort of hero saved a building full of people from a fire out in Coast City. When asked for an identity, he replied, I'm back. You don't think... No, and neither should you. Kind of weird, us being here in Mr. Kent's apartment, Miss Lane. Best place to lay low until tonight. Besides, I don't think Clark would mind. He wouldn't be needing it anymore. You can't think like that, Miss Lane. Clark may be fine. I wish I shared your sense of optimism. That's something I've been meaning to ask you about. From the start of all this, you've never believed Lex or Brainiac. Especially the part about their connection to Superman. How do you know it's not the truth? Got feeling, kid. Jerno's instinct. I mean, we all know the Armada story is garbage, but what if what Brainiac said about Superman was true? Come on, Jimmy, you're talking about Superman here. Yeah, but what did any of us really know about him? Not enough. Superman and Brainiac both came from the same planet. They both have these powers. All I'm saying is, what if they meant to conquer Earth together, you know? After all, the guy was an alien. Would you shut up already? Clark gave his life fighting that thing. He loved this planet. He cherished the people. And you sit here, throwing out this nonsense about how he might have been in league with a scumbag like Luther. I lost everything when I lost him. And now he's not here, and I never got to tell him how much I wanted to say yes that night. I'm sorry, Miss Lane. I, I didn't mean anything by it. It's all right. It's just nerves. You said Clark. Huh? You said Clark gave his life fighting that thing. I'm sure you meant to say Superman. Yes. Yes, I did. Well, I've patched the camera in. This is all you need for broadcast. Just press this when you're ready. You've got 20 minutes. It's business as usual, Miss Lane. You take care of the text, and I'll take care of the visuals. Moments later, on a giant screen in Metropolis, Atop the WGBS building, a visual of Lois Lane phases in through static. Everyone is watching, even Lex, Brainiac and L. Ron inside the skull ship. People of Metropolis, for weeks we've watched the skies dreading an invasion from aliens. But the real invasion took place when Superman died. He was not the minion of Brainiac, 
He died fighting the minion of Brainiac. I do not carry any torch that Superman may still be alive. I watched him die, protecting our world one last time. But his spirit is still alive. While everyone is captivated by Lois's speech, Jimmy has snuck into LexCorp to try and shut down the holographic projection of the Armada. Just keep talking, Miss Lane. It's alive in all of you watching this. To whom I say, the Armada is a hoax. So I urge you, the people of Metropolis, go outside, look to the skies. For tonight, we reveal the lie sold to you by Brainiac and Lex. Because if... If Superman... If he were here, he would have done this for us. Since he's not, we do this for him. For Superman! Jimmy scans through the levers of a power grid inside a shed atop the LexCorp building, trying to determine which one will shut down the holograph. He shrugs and starts pulling every lever, one by one. With each lever, power begins shutting down at LexCorp. He then comes to the last switch. Had to be the last one, didn't it? He pulls the final lever and the holographic projector shuts down. Everyone in Metropolis peers into the sky as the armada shimmers, then disappears from view, for good. Jimmy steps out of the shed and looks up, smiling. Then the rooftop door explodes. LexCorp soldiers pile out, racing at Jimmy, rifles drawn. The soldiers train their sights on him and begin firing. Jimmy dodges bullets as he is chased to the edge of the roof. His footing slips, and he falls, plummeting to his death. Something swoops in and catches him, ten floors from the pavement. It's Superman in the Eradicator suit. And with the cowl-like nature of the suit's headpiece, Jimmy doesn't recognize him. The hero swoops to the ground, setting Jimmy down in a back alley. You're nowhere near a pool to be diving like that, kid. Holy cow! Who are you? Where's Miss Lane? On the street somewhere. I'm supposed to meet her out front. Find her, and both of you get to safety. This city's oppressors are about to feel my wrath. Wait! This might come in handy. Jimmy hands him the LexCorp disc, which he takes and inserts into his suit. Then he takes to the skies in a fury. In Metropolis, many people cheer now that the fake armada is gone and many others start moving toward the LexCorp building in protest. Lex's soldiers fight the marching crowd of people. Inside the skull ship, Lex stares into the sky, seeing that the armada is no longer visible. There goes my bid for mayor. Brainiac, that feed only went as far as Metropolis. There's still time to contain this. You are the one facing public furor here, Luther, not I. You've yet to learn the most important lesson of American history. Always have a patsy. I won't be taking the rap for this, my alien friend. You will. Time to shut you down. Pull the plug. Lex presses a button on a remote control. Then a red light flashes on a panel. A team of engineers disengage the power cables that Brainiac used to feed into the Earth's core. Suddenly, Five LexCorp soldiers enter as the Skull Ship's power dims. Brainiac looks around in panic. I've disengaged your power source. Learned a few things from the diagnostic scanner I loaded onto that rocket. Feeding off the planet's core to maintain your form. No, no, no. Lunch hour's over. Brainiac begins convulsing. Lex smiles victoriously as the alien weakens. Then cables erupt from Brainiac's form locking onto five soldiers as Brainiac absorbs their energy. Lex watches wide-eyed as the group, now drained, fall to the ground as burned husks. Fully energized, Brainiac stands erect, the cables retracting. He grabs Lex by the throat. Enough with the appetizers. On to the main course. We're under attack. Violent crowds have gathered here and at LexCorp. Ah, the fickle masses. How quickly one can become the focus of ire of the Vox Populi. If they access the building, they'll tear you limb from limb. Nonsense. 
I'll crush these fleshy nuisances as easily as I crush you. My liege, we still need him. He can hook you back up to the core. Then you can crush whomever you like. We will need all the energy we can get for our confrontation with the Eradicator, sire. I concur. Okay, Lex Luthor. I'll let you go. Hey, plug him back in. Elrond, disengage the ship. I'll teach the apes to fear their god. That doesn't make sense. The Eradicator is within minutes of the Citadel. We should concentrate our efforts on that, not the Earthlings. Do as I command. Our location matters little. The technology is coming to me regardless. Meanwhile, Superman, in the Eradicator suit, flies through the sky. It's heading for the bridge. Now so are we. I was afraid you'd say that. Then you'll have to excuse me, because it's been some time since I've been able to say this. This looks like a job for... May we just proceed, please? Meanwhile, the LexCorp troops have chased the angry mob back onto the bridge. In the distance, the Skull ship approaches from the sky. The Skull ship blasts a laser at the bridge's suspension cables. The bridge begins to snap and crumble. The massive crowds, including LexCorp troops, rush to the side of the bridge, hanging on for dear life. The bridge begins to fall into Metropolis Bay. Then suddenly, Superman, in the Eradicator suit, swoops in, grabbing the suspension cables. He pulls with all the suit's strength, trying to keep the bridge from falling. Superman strains, holding the cables. On the land-locked side of the bridge, Lois emerges from the crowd that stares up at the costume spectacle. She shakes her head in bewilderment. The crowd slides down the unstable bridge, holding onto anything they can. Meanwhile, inside the skull ship, Lex stares at the view screen, perplexed. Did I not tell you it would come to me? I'm getting another reading from it, a biologic. Yes, the Kryptonian. It would appear the Eradicator has succeeded in resuscitating him. Wait a second. Who? Back at the bridge, Superman continues to strain, as does the suit. Eradicator, amplify my voice. Please clear off the bridge as quickly as possible. Now that the bridge is cleared of people, Superman lets the cables go and the entire structure collapses into Metropolis Harbor. Superman hangs in the air, surveying the crowds on the shore. We did it! We saved them! What's this we nonsense? Then a laser blast shoots past them. Superman reacts. The midsection of the skull ship jettisons, becoming an independent craft. Claws jut out, grabbing the Man of Steel. Inside the skull ship, Elrond mans the controls. I've got him. Quickly, inject the anti-technology. While Superman fights to free himself from the craft, a syringe-like arm shoots from the craft into the suit, sending a charge through it. The Eradicator shuts down. The technology is offline, my liege. Excellent. Bring it to the loading bay. I shall withdraw the Kryptonian from the technology personally. Kryptonian? Are you talking about Superman? No, no, no! Superman's dead! We killed Superman! The attack craft carries Superman in the suit to the rear of the skull ship. Not again! Come on, Eradicator! Wake up! Would you pipe down? Why didn't you say something? It's called playing possum, Kal-El. I'm not from Earth, and even I know that. I'm diverting power from X-ray vision cells. Get ready. A surge of power charges through the suit, and Superman breaks free of the craft's grip. Superman in the suit peers through the windshield of the attack craft. He grabs the craft and swings it into the skull ship, puncturing the hull. Brainiac and Lex duck as the attack craft rips into the ship, spilling Elron out at their feet. The ship grows dim as power fades. Superman watches the skull ship falter. 
Then, something catches his eye and he freezes. Near the bridge below, Lois stares up at him as her eyes widen. Superman in the Eradicator suit moves slightly towards her. But then suddenly the skull ship's lights come back on. And from the skull ship, a laser blasts, striking the Superman combo. The pair go rocketing through the sky. Below, Lois panics as the mystery hero is blasted far in the distance, out of sight. Miss Lane, where are you going? Wait, I think, I think I saw... Hold on, Jimmy, I've got to find something out, once and for all. A short time later, Lois breaks into Superman's tomb. She stares at the casket for a moment, then places her hands on it. I don't want to do it, Clark. If you're still in here, I don't think I'll be able to take it. But I have to know. Suddenly, blinding light fills the small room. Lois is startled. She drops her flashlight and turns around. Peekaboo. A short time later, the Skull ship lands atop Metro Towers and again seals itself onto the building. Inside the ship, Elrond brings Lois to Brainiac. This is the woman that held Superman's affections. The Kryptonian? Yes. Isn't that right, Lex? Yes, very true. Whenever she's in trouble, he comes to save her. In turn, she gave him plenty of ink in the Daily Planet. You harbor affection for the corpse they called Superman? I killed him, you know. His weakness all along. All I ever would have needed was this woman blocking out the sun, dealing with the insufferable Lex Luthor of Earth. A waste of Brainiac's time. I could have offered the woman's life in exchange for the technology. But now... What in the world are you talking about? Superman's dead. Goodness gracious. When are you going to get it? Superman lives. If that's true, Lex, I can promise you one thing. You're dead meat. Enough of these games. You will be the bait that draws the Kryptonian to me. And with him comes, too, the technology I seek. Elrond, we still have a Thangarian snare beast in the menagerie, yes? Yes, my liege. Good. Introduce him to the atmosphere here on Earth. Meanwhile, in a desolate part of the city, where there is not a soul in sight, the Eradicator suit crashes down, cracking the ground. The suit morphs back into the Eradicator. Superman is utterly exhausted. You didn't see that blast coming! I had to divert all the power from my shield so you could play hero. And now there's a circuit malfunction from the effects of the anti-technology surge. I'm going to need time to repair internally. How long is that going to take? We have to get back out there and finish Brainiac! Barring battles with killer spacecrafts or lifting of multi-ton bridges, 20 minutes. <sighs> I hate to say it, but I could use some time to heal myself. This is the first time in, well, ever, that I feel completely exhausted. You've touched the precise factor that plagues me, kal -El. Your life on Earth thus far has been spent as we have spent today, saving lives, battling aggressors, Yet I would imagine that after your mortal trial, you would have reevaluated your role amongst the people of Earth. I have, actually. Before I died, I have always felt like a stranger. I may look like them, but I'm still an alien. That always put distance between me and everyone else. But now I know I'm more like them than I ever thought. In what fashion? Before, I couldn't identify with their frailty. Now I honestly can. It's humanizing. Your father would be proud. You could have been a god on this world, enslaved it like Brainiac, but you never chose that path. Instead, you sit here, musing over the possibility of death between moments of saving this planet from its oppressor. Call me old-fashioned, but it really is better to serve than be served. This is what marks the difference between your kind and mine. We serve because we have to. You serve because you choose to. Then how do you explain Brainiac? He's one of your kind, but he's serving no one. Inaccurate, kal -El. 
like he's serving himself. He has taken an aspect of humanity, but it's the worst one. And when a machine begins to feel positive or negative, then it ceases to be a machine. And for the good of all, it must be shut down. As you must shut down Brainiac. Tough talk from a guy who only yesterday thought we should find another planet. I can only point to the bad influence you have become. Suddenly, the sky lights up. Visible to all of Metropolis is the holographic image of Brainiac's face. People of Metropolis, you need no longer fear takeover by hostile aliens. The hostile alien is here. I claim your planet as my own. Gone is the charade of the benevolent Brainiac. I have come to enslave your race. Your world has no champion to save you now and to mark this historic night. I offer you a display of the price to be paid for rebellion. Tonight, Lois Lane, the instigator of the anti-Brainiac call to arms, will taste the might of my fury as she is executed for all to witness. Soldiers, take her to the menagerie. <laughs> Superman looks to the sky with a vengeful look. Before he can even ask, the Eradicator opens up, reconfiguring into the suit. Superman leaps in, and it seals around him. This may be the only chance I get to say this, but thank you. For everything. Don't mention it. Off they rocket into the night. Perry White and Jimmy Olsen watch wide-eyed as the sky lights up anew with the image of the Skull Ship Menagerie. They're going to kill Lois. Somebody's got to do something. Somebody is, Chief. Somebody is. Suddenly, the holograph is shattered by Superman in the Eradicator suit, soaring toward the Skull Ship Citadel. Inside the Menagerie, two huge doors open revealing a darkened pit. The captive Lois is ushered toward it by Brainiac, Elrond, Lex, and the soldiers. Ah, uh, Lois. I don't even want to know what's lurking in there. Should have kept your nose for news out of business that wasn't yours. It's a lesson you're going to learn as harshly as your ex-boyfriend. That's right. You're not going to put this in any paper. Yeah. I helped kill the Man of Steel. So what? You monster! Save it, Miss Lane. Do you have any last words for the viewers of the world? But then suddenly, Superman in the Eradicator suit explodes through the roof on the Citadel, then through the ceiling of the bridge, and through the floor, and finally, through the ceiling over the assembled group's heads. Border Patrol, I hear we've got an illegal alien here. Step out of my technology, Kryptonian, or the woman dies. Don't engage, Kal-El. I can't take him. You can't. He's rendered himself electro-radioactive. If we touch him, the power surge will kill you even within me. The Eradicator opens, and Superman steps out. Lois tearfully smiles. Lex goes wide-eyed. Superman looks at Lois. She moves slightly toward him, but Brainiac pulls her back. Then, the suit morphs into the Eradicator again. It's been some time, Eradicator. But here we are again, the pride of Jor-El. The killer of Krypton is more appropriate. I have waited decades and searched galaxies, all in pursuit of this moment. And now, you're mine. It is your aim to absorb my technology and become all-powerful, I would imagine. And they call me Brainiac. But aren't you worried? What could possibly worry me? When I attempted to interface with your Shadowcaster device, I was contaminated, temporarily shut down. What if the same thing happens when you attempt to absorb my technology into yours? What if your technology is too advanced to interface with mine? <laughs> you think it's advanced? The irony is how primitive it is compared to your own. You have no doubt overthought on the Shadowcaster, when in reality you should have approached it as a child's toy. A child's toy? Certainly. It's Earth's hardware crossed with my own technology. 
Its systems are so far beneath your own capabilities that a simple binary synapse would have bypassed any contamination factor. And they call you Brainiac. The Eradicator quickly morphs back into the suit, grabbing Superman and hurling the Man of Steel into himself. For this insolence, I will erase your memory banks, machine! I'm not a machine. You are. The suit leaps into the air, rocketing out of the Citadel. Lex looks around fearfully, and sneaks out a side exit, and pulls out his cell phone, making a call. I want the jet fueled and standing by. Now. The Pajama Boy is back. Meanwhile, Brainiac grabs Lois and throws her into a dark pit. Superman in the Eradicator suit races through the outer atmosphere, heading toward the distant Shadowcaster. What are you doing? Why aren't we running? Kal-El, I think I've had what's called an epiphany. Really? That's excellent to hear, but we're getting farther away from rescuing the woman I love. Your passion is inspiring, and has taught me something I thought far beyond my ability to comprehend. I must thank you, kal -El. You've imparted to me the wisdom of a life lived in service to others. What are you talking about? Were it not for your insight, I'd be no better than the machine that oppresses your world, operating solely on the cold logic of what it's programmed to do. But now, I'm choosing to serve. Now, I understand your commitment to this planet and its inhabitants, and I'm going to help you honor it. You picked a heck of a time to tell me how you feel. Wait, how you feel? No! When a machine begins to feel, positive or negative, then it ceases to be a machine. It must be shut down, or shut down itself. The Eradicator grabs a piece of itself and pulls it off, which morphs into a silver version of the familiar S. Take a deep breath, and remember to stay in the light. Before he can react, the Eradicator separates from Superman. He slaps the S on his black suit and lets him go, sending him hurtling towards Earth. Superman lives. The Eradicator then rockets out of sight as Superman free falls through space. The Eradicator reaches the mammoth device and links into it. The anti-technology sends shockwaves coursing through his body. He fights against it. The Shadowcaster begins losing power. Sections of panel begin shutting down. Sunlight begins pouring through in shafts. The Eradicator begins to shift in shape, the anti-technology coursing through his body. His form finally comes to rest on the figure we've come to know him as most. His face forms a peaceful, joyous smile. Then he explodes. Meanwhile, Superman is plummeting to Earth coming closer to the planet. As he falls, the Eradicator's voice echoes through his head. And remember to see him. Then, one of the stray sunbeams from the shattered Shadowcaster hits him full force. He absorbs a concentrated beam of solar energy. His face tightens. Mere yards from the ground, Superman stops falling in mid-air and rights himself swooping upwards. While flying, he stretches his muscles like he's just woken up after a long sleep. The fully powered hero flies through Metropolis Park. He retrieves his cape from the statue's extended hand, and then bounds upward towards the skull ship. Moments later, he bursts through the ceiling again, now wearing his cape. He rockets through the ceiling of the pit, allowing the singular shaft of light to follow. Suddenly, he's struck by a high-powered stream of murky liquid from above, which knocks him out of the light, and entraps him in the webbing, beside the struggling Lois. Baby! Lois! How do we get out of here? Something huge and quick drops from the shadows beyond the shaft of sunlight, striking Superman. It's the Thanagarian snare beast, and boy, has it grown. It resembles something of a cross between a squid and a spider, but very biomechanical and sleek. And now inhabited by Brainiac's consciousness it's extra lethal as well. Brainiac's voice is heard, hissing from somewhere within the creature. Superman. The beast attacks the Man of Steel, battering him, then moves quickly back into the darkness, leaving Superman a bit dazed. Are you alright? I'm... I'm okay. I just wish I could see what I'm fighting. Then, the beast drops on Superman anew, its massive legs tearing at him. 
Superman struggles free, bolting toward the shaft of light to strengthen his powers, but the creature grabs hold of him, pulling the Man of Steel back into the darkness. Suddenly, the creature's underbelly opens, setting loose six smaller, metallic versions of itself. Superman breaks free of the beast and begins fighting the creatures off, smashing them, crushing them in his grip. Many of the micro-creatures crawl on Lois, Superman reacts, heat blasting them to nothing until there are none left. But the beast is on him again. Its midsection spreads to reveal its barbaric and primitive-looking head. The beast brings Superman to its jaws while letting loose an ungodly screech. The pair violently tussle, the beast's head and legs rising and striking, Superman blocking and attacking. A leg shoots from the darkness and catches Superman by the throat, pinning him against the web. The beast's jaws come in close to Superman's face, preparing to gorge. Superman uses all of his strength to stretch his fist into the just out of reach shaft of light. For a moment hope seems lost, but he makes it, recharging himself. The jaws of the creature almost on his head, Superman comes across with a right hook that knocks the creature into the air. Superman crawls into the sunlight, takes in as much as he can, and leaps up at the beast, grabbing hold of the wildly flailing creature. He flies it up and out into the full beam of sunlight. Superman now fully charged, as if his strength never left him. You can see the power in his expression as he clearly now has the advantage in this colossal battle. You wanna hide in a bog? I'll crush you like one! <laughs> Hooked into the helm of the beast, Brainiac convulses, feeling the pain of the beating. Superman grabs the head of the creature and pulls it off, ferociously. The machine he's hooked up to explodes from the feedback, and Brainiac flees back into his own body, throwing the helm off. He weakly tries to crawl away from the wreckage. Breathing heavily, Superman grabs a hold of him, lifting Brainiac above his head. You destroyed my home world! You killed me! And you forced my friend to give his life! You do not take lives! The... That is the code you live by, like the Eradicator. I live. No. He was one of the most human beings I've ever known. You, you're just a machine. Superman punches his fist through Brainiac's chest and out his back. Brainiac convulses and dies. Superman drops his mangled form to the floor, where it reverts back to its most primitive form, just mere metal and circuitry. Superman quickly flies to Lois's side, pulls her from the webbing, and scoops her up into his arms. Do I look tired? Because I feel tired. You look a little worn, yes, but right now I have a million questions about what happened to you. Well, maybe I can help shed some light on the subject. Superman streaks up one of the shafts of light, Lois in his arms. Moments later, they arrive at the Daily Planet and gently land on the roof. Thank God you're back. I thought you were gone for good. So did I. But I learned a few things. I know what keeps me here. What keeps me doing what I do. What kept me from accepting the grave. It's you, Lois. Superman may look out for everyone, but he doesn't belong to the world. He belongs to you, and you belong to me. I love you, Clark. Never leave me again. I won't, babe. I won't. From now on, I'm going to try to be more man than super. Oh, Clark. Are you still dwelling on Mount Rushmore? Forget what I said. That was before maniacal robots from outer space killed you. Wait, wait, wait. You're going to let something small like that alter your opinion? You, Lois Lane, hard-bitten journalist for the Daily Planet? See, that's the one thing you have to learn, Smallville. A woman's allowed to change her mind at any given moment, especially after a bad week. Now kiss me, dead man, before I change my mind. Must you always have the last word? Lois is about to respond, but Superman kisses her instead. Give me a sec, okay? I still have a mess to clean up. This is true. Just make sure you come back this time. I'll always come back to you, Lois. Superman then leaps into the air and flies away, leaving a sonic boom in his wake. 
Superman reaches the partially functioning, sparking Shadowcaster. He begins pushing the massive form, getting up some speed, until he lets it go. It whips through space, until it hits the surface of the sun and explodes. The device is destroyed, and sunlight pours through space and over the planet. As Metropolis is illuminated with sunlight, Lex emerges from LexCorp, carrying two suitcases, both packed to the brim. He rushes toward his limo, looking up at the new dawn. As Lex reaches for the limo door, Superman lands in front of him. Morning, Luther. Going somewhere? And that's the end of the line for Lex Luthor. The Man of Steel hands him over to authorities, and with the help of the disc that Jimmy provided, Lex was charged with espionage against the world government. While the police take him into custody, Superman begins to ascend, and before he takes off for the sky, he offers some final words. I just wanted to let you know who it was that beat you, boy.